It's Rugby World Cup semi-final weekend, England, New Zealand on Saturday, South Africa, Wales on Sunday. We're going to be looking ahead to those two games. I'm joined in the studio by Garen Lamley. Morning, Garen. Morning, Lloyd. Let's start with the Springboks. They've just named their side, and obviously the big news is that Cheslin Colby, who's had a superb tournament so far, has ruled out with an ankle injury. It's gutting for him. Uh, more than capable replacement, though, in, in Spoo and Corsi, but just how big a loss is that for South Africa? You know, I, I think on paper it would be a big loss. He's certainly been our form player earlier in the tournament and the lead-up to the tournament. We expected big things from him. To be fair, the game plan that the Springboks are likely to employ against Wales, he probably won't see as much of the ball as he would have in previous matches. So just having said that, it's probably not the biggest loss. There could have been bigger um, losses, um, certainly around the sort of half-back pairing and, you know, the loose trio. But, you know, he, he does bring that X factor. He's dynamic on his feet. He creates something out of nothing. He's good under the high ball. Um, and Corsi, as you say, more than adequate replacement. It's just that he hasn't played as much rugby. So hopefully he's not cold. He doesn't come in sort of like, you know, trying to need to get into the game plan or sort of match um, conditions. And, you know, he's able to fit in seamlessly. So, you know, not the worst um, um, replacement, but I think the box will be, you know, they probably would have preferred him to be fit, put it mm. that way. I remember leading into the tournament um, thinking that, you know, Spoon Corsi was in such good form and he absolutely had to play. There obviously wasn't the space. But defensively, will he be okay? Because the Springboks rely a lot on their, their defense. Is he, is he uh, good enough defensively for the box? I, I think he will be. You know, he's obviously this week trained with the Springbok team. There's probably a question mark over Colby the whole week. So you would have expected um, in Corsi to have been in the sort of first team training um, set up. Um, Wales, you know, obviously who, who they're going to put up against them. They're not the, also the most dynamic backline in the world. So it's not like he's got a 130 kilogram winger running at him all afternoon. So, you know, I think he'll be more than fine on defence. The box will probably play 10 man rugby. I don't think Wales will de deviate much from their tried and tested game plan as well. Dan Bigard, Flaff, presumably, should he be selected? going to put up a lot of up and unders on both wings, I would have thought, as well as Willie LaRue at fullback. So hopefully the back three gel. Um, it will be quite a key um, area of the match. It could well go, you know, an error could well decide this match. I think it's going to be fairly tight. I don't think it's going to be the better of the two semifinals to watch, to be honest. I think, you know, the Springboks are probably going to grind out a victory and it's not going to be that pretty, but that's sort of what you do in knockout rugby. You know, one point victory is more than enough. There's no bonus points on the line. So I think they will go with what they, we saw them do pretty much against Japan, sort of try and bull, bully the Welsh up front, lots of rolling malls, secure their line-out, they've been flawless at line-out time, scrum time being more than, more than adequate, and I think they'll just um, get Pollard to, to kick penalty off the penalty, kick it into the corner if they have to, and, ro and drive the mall from there. Uh, I feel like we spent the, the rest of the week talking about box kicking and, and refereeing. Uh, Jerome got says referees the game, and South Africans have had quite a lot to say about that. Surely uh, making a bit of a fuss about nothing. I mean, how much impact can a guy really have on a game? Uh, do, do you think the South Africans are sitting there training and in the change room worrying about this? I mean, is there any cause for concern here? I, you, know, you know, obviously our record again under Jerome Garcia's four wins out of 14 isn't a, an amazing record. Mm. The truth be told, a lot of those matches have against, been against the All Blacks and we probably would have lost most of those games no matter who the referee was. Yeah. Obviously, Garcia has been a Frenchman. He would have refereed Wales and the Six Nations and all their players in, in the European tournaments more often than he would have refereed South African players. So the Welsh will know his style you know, mm. how he referees the break time in particular. So they probably uh, will be able to adapt a little bit quicker than we will. That's going to be key for the South Africa, obviously, early on to sort of get a gauge of how he's refereeing and sort of learn from the, what, how he's penalising and what he's not penalising and, and take it from there. We're going to have to be fairly, fairly smart, I'd say, in, in this match. But, you know, a referee is a referee. On their day, they, they're good or bad. It really depends on what um, he's allowing and, and how you adapt to it. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 very, it's very difficult to say one referee would have suited one team better than another team. It's just that he is a Northern Hemisphere ref and we're playing against a Northern Hemisphere team. That's my only concern. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he is among the top five, I'd say, in the, in the world. He, yeah. You know, he, he hasn't fluked his way into this appointment. And it's just that we have a bad record. I think South African fans are sort of harping on that rather than looking at, um, you know, how to actually adapt. And the management have come out and say he's one of the best in the world, and I think yeah. he is. Uh, just on the refereeing, still that Yaku paper incident, um, you know, which took us a bit by surprise. What did you make of that? Do you think it was a bit of a, an overreaction from, from World Rugby? Was he going to get a semi-final slot, do you think? Uh, and, 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 I mean, just... just was he a bit silly to, to put himself in that situation? Yeah. Well, I mean, put it this way, he, he'll never do that again. 
yeah. rightly or wrongly. He'll, he, he, the benchmark has now sort of been set for referees around the world, what World Rugby will tolerate and what they won't. Uh, he certainly would have learned from that. He's lost out on, uh, uh, he would have been hit in the pocket for not getting an appointment in the semi-finals. Um, I think it was blown out of proportion a little bit. You know, it's after the fact. He's a human being. He's he bumped into a couple of Welsh fr fans. Obviously, after a few drinks, they've roped him in. They've got a mate to take a picture of him. He's given the elbow as you know, the French player was sent off for. Uh, so you know, it's all good fun, good humour. Uh, I think it was blown out of proportion a little bit. You know, World Rugby have got bigger problems to worry about than than um, docking f um, referees pay and, and um, you know banning them for for matches so you know i think they should focus perhaps more on their their own rules that have come under the spotlight their own safety and and other referees as well and tmos that have made mistakes so i think yoko paper can feel a little bit hard done by you're talking a bit about uh, the, the game style earlier what you're expecting for the weekend and certainly in that quarterfinal south africans uh, collectively spent a lot of time moaning about box kicking over those 80 minutes uh, and they should probably get used to it because you're expecting more of the same on, on the weekend. Absolutely. You know, Faf de Klerk, he put up a lot of box kicks. Um, he's obviously under instruction to do so. To be fair, some of them probably weren't his best box kicks. Um, you know, some went a little bit too far, put no pressure on, on the Japanese um, defenders taking the ball. Some didn't go far enough, put his own forwards sort of in an offside position. But certainly, you know, that's our style. We're not going to deviate too much from that. We, we simply can't afford to. We haven't practiced any other style. So we'll go back to the tried and tested against the Welsh. I'm, sh I'm sure you'll see plenty of box kicks. The first couple that go up, they'll be booing from South African fans, I'm sure. But as soon as one leads to um, a, a regather by a South African player and then perhaps leads to a penalty or even a try, you know, everyone will be applauding Faf de Klerk for an amazing box kick and he'll just do more and more and more of those. He obviously offers more than just the box kicks. He was great on defense. He's, you know, he's pretty much, he plays the offside line sort of to the, to the letter of the law. He's often, you know, either caught offside or just onside. Um, but he, he, you know, he's, he's learned a lot from his days in sale. You know, he'll be one of play, the players, as I mentioned, that probably would have been, would, would have seen, um, um, Goss says more often than any of the other players. So, you know, he, he probably will learn from that and you'll know how he refs. The Springboks obviously incredibly strong in most departments, defensively, set piece. Uh, are there any areas where, where you think they can be looking for some improvement from what they did in the quarterfinals moving into Sunday? You know, it, uh, you, you're spot on. You know, the, their line out has been flawless. Their scrum is going to be dominant. Their rolling ball will be dominant as well. It's just the back line. You'd love to see them spread the board a little bit more than they have been in the past. You know, the, the Welsh back line, I'd say, is probably as good as the South African back line, but it's certainly not the South African strength. I expect us to sort of dominate up front, and I think that's where we'll probably have the edge in, when the final whistle goes. But, you know, we've got some decent backs that, you know, would love to see the ball. Um, Makazoli Mpimpi, you know, he's a leading try scorer or joint leading try scorer in the tournament. You know, he's obviously on form. We'd love to see him get more of the, bo of the ball. Uh, Valerie Leroux is a lot of pressure on him with a new wing in the back three. You know, he really has to step up. He was obviously the weak link, I think, last week. So we'd look for an improved performance from him. Certainly Rusty will as well. Obviously, we're hoping for no injuries because we've got a 6-2 back line, uh, forward back line mm -hmm. split again. You know, we simply can't afford any real injuries early on, especially in the back line. So, you know, but the Welsh, you know, they've underperformed, I think, in this whole tournament, even though, having said that, we don't have a great record, having lost, I think, the last four matches to them. So they'll be buoyed by that. They'll take confidence into the into the match. Warren Gatlin's a fantastic coach. You'll have them up for this game. It's obviously knockout rugby. You know, you win, you go to, through to the final. You lose, you go through to the bronze medal match that certainly nobody wants to play. So they'll certainly be up for this game. Um, they'll be good in the forwards. I just, you know, I just think we'll have a little bit too much firepower for them there. But again, you know, I'd love to see us spread the ball through, you know, through the hands of Polo to our centres. Damien Delendi, you know, put in a good performance, I thought, last weekend. More of the same running at the well centres, you know, that'll be what I'm looking out for. And then prediction-wise, just before we move on to England, New Zealand, uh, it sounds like you predicting a, a low-scoring, tight Springbok win? Yeah, exactly right. You know, I don't think it's going to be the prettiest match. I think it's going to be ground out. I think it'll be tight in the first half. We might just um, be ahead a couple of points at half time, and I think we'll end up winning by seven or eight. You know, converted try, I think, will be the difference mm. at, the end, in, at the end of the day. Looking ahead, Garen, to England, New Zealand, which, if you're the neutral, is, is the blockbuster of the weekend. I mean, it could be a, very easily be a World Cup final. Mm. Many people thought those were you know, the two contenders for the title going in. Yeah. Do you view this as a, almost a World Cup final? I mean, whoever wins this, are they favourites to go on and win the tournament? 100%. You know, I, I certainly think these two teams have been the strongest throughout the whole tournament. Um, you know, neither team has obviously lost. 
Uh, I fully expect whoever wins this to go on to win the tournament, no matter whether it's England or New Zealand. Having said that, I keep getting reminded by that South Africa have only won two finals and we've beaten England and New Zealand, so there should, be, yeah. should be a chance for us in that final should we get past Wales. But this is going to be a cracking match. You know, Again, it could well be a low-scoring match as the two teams sort of cancel each other out. But you know for sure that they are going to run the ball. There's not going to be as much kicking. It's not going to be as much of the rolling ball stuff. They're not going to have an emphasis on setting up lineouts and scrums. The New Zealand back line, they run in tries from everywhere. The England back line, I've really been impressed with. They've got some big runners. Manu Tuolagi, he's been a dominant force in the midfield for them. Eddie Jones, obviously a very shrewd coach. He, would, he will know the, the New Zealand style. He'll have a plan to counter that. Owen Farrell, I think, is key to this match as well. He, he's been on song with his kicking at poles, um, probably more so than anyone else in this tournament. You know, uh, between Richie Mwanga and, and um, Bowden Barrett, they, ha they can miss the odd kick, which it could come well come down to. You might well see some drop goals in this match. I saw New Zealand with practicing penalties after the match, should the match be tied after, after 80 minutes. So I, I fully expect this to be a tight match. There's so much on the line. These two teams now ranked one and two in the world. It could, it could literally go either way. You know, the New Zealand obviously have a fantastic record at World Cup Rugby. They're looking for their fourth title overall, third in a row. Nobody's ever done two in a row, so looking for three is quite an amazing feat. I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if England sneak this. There might be some controversy in this match. Again, they've got a Northern Hemisphere ref in, in Nigel Owens, who they will know more no better than the, the New Zealand opponents. So nothing would really surprise me in this game. I'd be shocked if it isn't a blockbuster match that we're talking about for years to come. Presuming South Africa win their semi-final, who do you think they would prefer to face in the final? I mean, from a, from a theatre point of view, in terms of having the dream final, uh, surely the All Blacks uh, in a Rugby World Cup final is what we all want. Absolutely. You know, that, that would be the, the dream final. We obviously know the, the All Blacks really well, having played them in the Rugby Championship year after year. Um, we've got a fairly good record against them in the last couple of years, not so much prior to that. Obviously, we lost by 10 points to them in, the, in Pool B in the, in the group phase. So that would be a case of one all and we would end up being world champions. So that's something to look out for. But having said that, if you just the better odds on South Africa winning, I think you'd have to say they'd rather play England. Mm. But having said that, England are the worst matchup, I would say, on paper for the Springboks because their pack of forwards is as good, if not better, than the, mm. the Springbok pack. And their back line is definitely, I'd say, more X factor than the, than the South African team. So we don't match up well against them. We match up better, I think, against the All Blacks, who their pack of forwards isn't the team that's going to roll and roll them all. Mm. And, you know, they're, they're going to lose the odd line out and their scrum is fairly, is fairly strong. But their back line is where their strength really lies. So as long as we starve them of ball, you know, we, they're not going to have back line ball for their back line. But, you know, it's, 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 it's difficult to say, you know, in a, in a final, anything can happen. We've seen in many, many World Cup finals, a drop goal could decide it. And that's happened a couple of times before. So, you know, it's, it's a, on the day, it's 50-50, I'd say. Mm. And then just uh, broadly looking at the whole tournament as we, you know, approach the end of it now. Um, how impressed have you been with the product uh, overall? And did it lose a bit because of some of those matches that were, that were, that were called off because of the, the typhoon? Oh, yeah. And do we have the four best teams in the tournaments playing in the semi-finals this weekend. Okay, to, to go through those answers, I, I, I've been a little bit disappointed by this tournament, to be honest. I think there's a bit of a gulf that's developed between the top couple of teams, not even four teams, to be honest, and the rest of the, the, the teams. You know, a couple of teams have really gone backwards. If you think like Wales, sorry, um, Ireland, Scotland, Italy, USA meant to be the next big thing. They, they were really, really poor under Gary Gold. Canada, the Fijis, the Tongas, the Samoas, they really, really have sort of fallen away, off the way. And then obviously Australia haven't been that good at either. So you've got the really, really good sides, I'd say, in, in England and New Zealand, perhaps South Africa. I don't particularly think Wales are that good. They were fairly fortunate to beat France. I think if they had stayed with 15 men on the field in their quarterfinal, Wales actually wouldn't even be there. And I don't think that France are actually that good. They scraped past Tonga and they lost to, um, they just beat um, Argentina. So the rugby as a, as a whole hasn't been the best. The crowds have been amazing, but that's always going to be the case no matter where you take this tournament next, in four years time in France, they'll be packed out, the crowds, you know, nobody can complain about the crowds. But the product on the field, I don't think has been as good as it can be. Obviously the, the referees have come in for a lot of scrutiny. There have been eight red cards, which is a record. A lot of matches therefore, you know, seem to get decided by the numerical disadvantage that one team has. And then obviously the typhoon cancelling, I think three matches didn't sort of help as well. The planning obviously le leaves a lot to be desired, not, not a, a rest day or a, a reserve day for that. So it, it, I think a lot of lessons will be learned. Um, 
but I think three of the best four teams certainly have reached the, the, the semi-final stage, but I couldn't tell you who the fourth best side, to be honest, is. It might be Wales, but I don't really think, I think there's a bit of a gulf between the top three and even the fourth team.